Hi guys, my name is Dave LaFaver and I'm the chef owner of Manhattan Beach Post, Fishing with Dynamite and the Arthur J in Manhattan Beach, California. One thing that I'm really hearing a lot this year is, hey, Chef David, I'm not going to my aunt's house this year for Thanksgiving because of COVID, so I have to cook the meal myself. Well, first of all, we can cook it for you if you want and have it ready for you. But secondly, I want to talk about some tips on how to make Thanksgiving Day a lot smoother, a lot more enjoyable, and a lot less hectic in order for you to have fun with the people that you are having Thanksgiving with and to make all the food taste the best that it can instead of hurrying and trying to do it all on Thanksgiving Day. So I have six tips for you that I think will really help. The first three tips are about turkey, okay? So the first tip is that most of you are probably going to get a turkey from the grocery store and it's probably going to be frozen. So if you don't know this, turkeys take at least three days to thaw in the refrigerator, okay? So first thing you're going to do is if you're buying a whole turkey and it's frozen, get it the Friday or the Saturday before Thanksgiving, get it inside of your refrigerator on the bottom shelf and let that process start very, very early, okay? The last thing you want to do is get a turkey on Tuesday, put it in the refrigerator, and open it up on Thursday and have it still be frozen in the middle of the, in the, middle of the carcass, okay? So that's number one, tip number one. Tip number two is use a brine, all right? Well, Chef David, what's a brine? Really simply, a brine is a liquid solution of water or stock and then some sort of salt and then some sort of flavoring agents, okay? So a real easy recipe for you and ratio to remember is one gallon of water to one cup of kosher salt, okay? That'll give you a good salt ratio to water ratio, right? The next thing you want to do is add a flavor to it, okay? So a lot of people will use orange zest, lemon zest, lime zest, and they'll make a citrus cure. Um, a lot of people add peppercorns or they'll add garlic to it. Um, I'm always a big fan of adding whatever herbs I, I'm going to roast it with. I add that to my brine. So I use rosemary, thyme, and sage. I add that to it. So all you have to do is take a gallon of water, bring it up to a simmer, take it off the heat, add a cup of salt to it, add whatever flavor you want in that, herbs, citrus, peppercorns, garlic, whatever you want that to taste like, stir that in there, and then if you want, you can add some sweetener. Sometimes you can add brown sugar, you can add sugar or agave. You don't need a lot. For a gallon of water, you might need a half cup to a quarter cup of sugar or sweetener, right? That sweetener is going to help you with the golden brown color because when you roast the turkey, if you've ever had a turkey and it's been really light tan, well, sometimes adding a little sugar to your brine will help that dark color be achieved by having you know, that sugar caramelize, okay? So that's tip number two is the brine, okay? You can take that brine, put it in a brining bag or a plastic bag, put the liquid in there, put the turkey in there, tie it up, right, cinch it, and put it in a bowl inside your refrigerator for 24 hours, and that brine, you know, if you turn the turkey about every five or six hours, the whole bird will get nice and brined, and then you'll have a lot of that flavor already in the bird before you're roasting it, okay? Tip number three with turkeys is once the turkey's cooked, to the internal temperature that you're looking for, you need to take it out of the oven and let it rest at room temperature, okay? People are like, no, I gotta serve it hot. Well, here's the problem. If you serve that turkey from the oven to the table and you start to slice it, all the juices are gonna run out of it and the, the, the breast meat especially is gonna taste very dry. When you let a bird rest at room temperature, when, a, when, a, when, when you're roasting meats and they get really hot, the meat kind of expands a little and the juices start to flow, okay? Well, as it starts to cool down again, those meats relax again and the juices get reabsorbed into that meat, okay? And it makes the meat more moist and more tender, okay? If you slice it hot and the juice runs out, you're going to end up having drier meat and tougher meat, okay? So letting it rest, and it's going to take, for a 14-pound turkey, you know, a 10 to 14 pound turkey, you're talking about 30 minutes to 45 minutes with a piece of foil over it just sitting on your kitchen counter. And you'll be amazed. You'll come back, you'll start slicing, it'll still be warm, but you won't have all that juice flow, okay? So tip one, get the frozen bird early enough in advance for it to thaw, at least three to four days. Tip number two, brine it for 24 hours ahead. And then tip number three, make sure that it rests 
once you take it out of the oven. Letting it rest creates a really great situation for you because now you have the turkey done, it's sitting out, now you can finish up some other things like maybe dressing a salad, things that you can't do in advance, right? So you wanna leave that last half hour for doing only the things that you can't do in advance, right? Tip number four is you wanna make whatever you can make in advance, okay? There's no need that you need to make your cranberry dressing the day of Thanksgiving. There's no reason that you have to roll out your pie dough the day of Thanksgiving. There's no reason that you have to make the pumpkin pie custard to put in your pie the day of Thanksgiving. Those are all things you can do in advance. Cranberry dressing especially, you're basically making a jam. It's sugar, water, cranberries. We use orange juice, we use ginger, some clove, and some spice in it. But you boil it, it gets really hot, the cranberries break down, and then it sets. You can put that in your refrigerator, it'll be good for four, five, six days. Think about how long you have jam in your refrigerator for your toast. So that's something you can do in advance. Pies. You can roll out the pie dough. You can make the pie dough four days ahead. You can roll out the pie dough two days ahead and put it into your tin, your pie tin. Wrap it in plastic, put it in the freezer. You can make your stuffing, your uh, filling for your pie, especially pumpkin pie, maybe not apple pie because it'll oxidize, but you can make your pumpkin pie filling two days in advance. It's a custard, so it's eggs and cream and sugar and, and then it's actual pumpkin filling, right? You can make that two days ahead. So then, if you wanna bake your pies the morning of Thanksgiving, you just grab the pie tin that you've already rolled out, Grab your filling, put that in there, smooth it out, and then bake it in the morning for usually pies. You know, some pies take about 45 minutes to some take an hour and a half, especially apple pies take a little bit longer. But pumpkin pies, you can make the dough and you can roll it out ahead and you can make the filling a day ahead and then do all that the morning of. So it makes less work you have to do on the day of. Um, gravy. Gravy is another thing. If you want to take you know, take the neck out of the bird and clip the wings and trim the butt area of the bird. You can take all of those things, roast them ahead of time and get a lot of ton of color on them and then deglaze it with some stock and make a gravy a day ahead. You know, really, if you think about it, for four to six people, you probably need a quart of gravy maximum, right? So you can make that out of the turkey neck, the turkey wings, and this little cavity on the bottom part of the bird near the, the rear of the bird. You can use all that to make your gravy the day ahead. Now, if you still want to fortify it with the pan drippings from your bird the day of, all you got to do is, once the turkey's resting, take that pan, put it over the heat, add the gravy you've already made and work up the rest of that stuff. So it's something that you can do ahead of time. Otherwise, if you're waiting until the bird is done and you're gonna use the pan to make the gravy, that means you gotta do that right before dinner and it's just stressful that way. Tip number five, right? Think about what you can do to cook things and then hold them at, hold them at the temperature you want them, right? So I'll give you a great example. You can make and mix your farro and your lettuces and your dried fruit and your nuts and everything and get it in the bowl and you can put it in the refrigerator and then later pour the dressing on top and just mix it. That's something you can do in advance. Another thing you can do in advance is you can make the mashed potatoes earlier in the day, mix them up, season them, hold back a little bit on your butter or on your cream, put those inside your slow cooker. You can put them in your slow cooker at low temperature Put the lid on it. Those mashed potatoes are going to be good for hours. They're going to be nice and hot. And because it's got a lid, you're not going to lose any moisture. All that moisture is going to stay in there. And you can keep that hot for hours beforehand instead of trying to make your mashed potatoes, put them in the pot, and get it onto the table right at Thanksgiving dinner time. Okay? Lastly, tip number six. Don't forget your grill outside. A lot of you guys in Southern California have great gas grills because we have so much wonderful weather out here. Well, remember, when I was a kid, and I was in Wisconsin, so this was in the middle of winter, my dad used to do the turkey in the grill outside. So he would roast the turkey in the grill outside on a low heat with the propane because we're using the inside oven for pies and for all the other things that we're baking. So don't forget your grill. If you don't feel comfortable using the grill for your turkey, Hey, when you make the stuffing, <clears throat> you can do the stuffing and then hold it in the grill. That grill is like a low heat oven. <clears throat> so that's something that you can use. Put items in there, keep them slightly warm. You don't have to turn all the grates on, maybe one grate on low 
and it'll keep their stuffing hot. It can keep your gravy warm. It can even keep your turkey warm if you want to keep it out in that while you're using your inside oven for other stuff. I think those are six great things that, <clears throat> number one, if you do them, the quality of your food gets better. You know, you're managing your day a lot easier and you can spend more time with your family and you can spend more time watching football or whatever it is that you guys like to do on Thanksgiving. And look, if you don't want to do any of those, you can always spend the whole day cooking and I know a lot of people love to do that as well. For me personally, I always try to get as much done beforehand so I'm not as stressed on Thanksgiving Day and I can spend it with my family and I'm not running around trying to get everything done and freaking out on the day of. So... You know, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you're cooking for the first time, don't be too hard on yourself. It should be fun. And you know what? Make some mistakes so you can learn something from it. But these are six things I think that you can do that will really, really help. Enjoy your Thanksgiving.